Okay, part two of the color wheel. We are, there's lots of different ways to paint a color wheel, and lots of different color charts. Um, what I would like you to learn is something called complementary colors. Complementary colors mean colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. Some people call them opposites. Um, you can also think of it as black and white. Okay, black and white are opposite colors. Um, and black and white helps illustrate the concept of what complementary colors do. When they are right next to each other, placed next to each other, um, they make each other look more bright, okay? So like black and white looks very high contrast because the white makes the black look darker and the black makes the light look darker. That's why you see a lot of logos that use complementary colors. For instance, red, I mean, orange and blue are complementary colors. Um, there's some major sports teams that use those in their logo, okay? However, when you mix complementary colors together, what happens when you mix white and black? What do you get? You get gray. Um, so when you mix complementary colors together, similar things happen. It depends on the pigment. Sometimes you'll get a gray. Usually you'll get something more like a brown, okay? Um, and it, so it's good to know how to tone down your colors if you don't want them so bright. So um, now what we're gonna be doing is mixing your colors across from each other. So this color, red, violet, is gonna get closer to green and then uh, the green is going to get closer to red they're going to form kind of some different types of browns in the middle okay all right in order to prepare for this um so say i'm doing two of my colors that are not straight from the tube um i mix these colors so i need to pre-mix a big pile of this and a big pile of that before i even get started okay um because this here's the color but it's all dry now so i need to get a bunch of yellow so in, when I'm trying to mix a whole pile of paint, like a big pile of paint, um, I like to use a palette knife so I'm not damaging my brushes and um, getting my brush all full of paint. It's just a little bit more blue. Okay, and I like to hold my palette knife up to it to help me decide. Um, it's a little bit brighter, but um, acrylic does dry darker. It's a little bit more close. Okay, so I'm going to wipe this, and then I'm going to do my red violet. So it's going to be mostly red. Okay, so now that I have my two piles, now I can um, come up with my four mixtures. So I'm going to have mostly red violet with a little bit of my yellow green. I added a little bit. It didn't really change it. What I'm trying to do is have something that looks distinctly different from my other box. So the weird thing is, something that you might not expect is that it's getting lighter. Um, and that's because this color is lighter, so um, yeah, you might get something that's lighter. Okay, now I'm going to mix in quite a bit more, see what happens when I put quite a bit more in there. It's creating kind of an orange. Now this is why I love a flat brush, is because they're so versatile. If I'm very careful, I can get all the way down into this pie shape. Um, and stay within my sh my shape because I'm using the thin edge of the flat brush. Um, if you feel like you can't gain that control, then you'll want to switch over to a smaller, more pointed brush. Okay, I'm going to squeeze out my paint. Now I'm going to jump over to the green side. And I'm not too picky about the combinations you get here. Um, I just kind of want you to be familiar with the concept of mixing complementary colors and it's just kind of one big experiment like how can we manipulate color what types of colors can we get um, by doing this and mostly what I want you to learn is that 
this entire worksheet where um, 36 sections have been painted a different color, a distinctly different color, and we created 36 different colors, distinctly different colors, only by using three tubes of three different colors out of the tube. And so that's kind of what I want you to learn is that um, color is complicated and you can get all a huge range of colors um, just by mixing things in different amounts. way too red. And then you'll just continue that. So make sure I'll wash out my brush completely with white. And then I'll do this section, wash it out, then do this section, wash it out, then do this section. If you ever feel like your palette is getting completely overwhelmed and you don't have any new places to paint, that's time to clean your palette or throw your palette paper away and start a new palette. Um, because we want to keep these combinations pure. I only want this row to include this color and this color in different mixtures, okay? Um, and otherwise you won't get the full effect of like what your color wheel looks like. Once it's all finished, you will kind of see this like unity um, and progression where things gradually get um, lighter or they gradually get darker or they gradually get cooler or they gradually get warmer. Um, they'll all gradually get kind of more brown towards the center. So we want to see that full effect of the color wheel when it's finished. And so you want to make sure to do it carefully in an organized way so that you keep your pigments pure. Okay, thanks for watching.